Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this updated video. And so in this video, we will be talking about Invest 97L, which is a disturbance that is noted out in the main development region. So it is really struggling out there. And we're also going to be talking about what is ahead for the Atlantic Basin. And so before I go into details... Okay, so we are starting off with a look at uh, satellite imagery right now and we're seeing that we do have some shower activity taking place in various areas of the North Atlantic. We see that in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, the northern part of the Gulf of Mexico right there. Also out in the main development region and just off Africa. So uh, our disturbance is located just maybe about midway between the Lesser Antilles and the coast of Africa and so the formation chance has significantly decreased for this. So going to the National Hurricane Center's outlook, we're seeing something completely contrasting what was there a few days ago which is a near zero percent chance of development coming all the way from being a medium chance of development guys and so this system is producing limited shower activity as of right now and it is also going to be encountering unfavorable conditions and that is the reason we have uh, this no longer expected to develop into a tropical cyclone so it is almost certain that this is not going to be uh danielle and so we still have to wait on that and as i speak this season is really taking me back to 2019 in terms of when uh, these systems develop and how many at this time and so dorian which was letter d developed in the latter part of august the 24th to be exact and it was a major hurricane of course and uh, i am expecting a season that is going to be a bit similar to 2019 in terms of the amount of named storms that are going to form uh, let's see what's going to be happening but it is likely that 97l is just going to eventually dissipate out there not to become anything of significance and so let us go ahead and take a look now at those unfavorable conditions ahead of the system so going to the dry air map and we are seeing that there is quite a bit of uh, Saharan dust that is noted out there a lot of dry air uh, we see that really just off the coast of Africa and extended to the north within that region and we see a bit that is noted in sections of the Caribbean but not a whole lot there however this is a huge inhibiting factor for tropical cyclones because tropical cyclones need moisture and so moisture development isn't likely in the presence of all this dry air and so hence uh, any thunderstorm development any tropical systems trying to develop would uh, be struggling to maintain all these shower activity within them and eventually they dissipate if they do not persevere and that seems to be the case right now with invest 97l and then looking at the wind shear so there is quite a bit of unfavorable shear that is noted across the caribbean right now and also in sections of the main development region so uh, as i said this thing here is just going to be making its way into unfavorable conditions uh, that increase in shear as well as the dry air and it is already struggling so going ahead though uh, i want to point out something very important that the climate prediction center highlighted and so looking at this map just beneath where we have that week two map right there we have the key which represents uh which is a guide of the colors and symbols and so we are focusing on the right side of that map and we're looking at week two so we see that we have that red and that green striped area and that red striped area uh represents the possible development of a tropical cyclone and that green striped area is just really showing uh, more rainfall than normal but not necessarily above average rainfall so increasing shower and thunderstorm activity is expected off the coast of africa and maybe we could see something develop within that region but the models aren't really showing anything so we definitely have to wait and see for that but as of right now we have that area that is highlighted and once we have increased in shower and thunderstorm activity there is a chance that we will see development especially from those tropical waves so we just need conditions ahead of them to be favorable enough to allow them to actually develop but once we have those waves making their way out of africa and having all that show and thunderstorm activity we definitely have to watch them for development because go into the uh, late part of august and going to september this is for august where we typically have our systems developing we see that we can have them off uh, just 
just as they make their way off the coast of Africa, they accelerate westward and in the presence of the favorable conditions, they develop and intensify into tropical cyclones. September, we have a lot more activity because September is the peak of the hurricane season. And so we definitely have to watch these waves as they're going to be emerging off Africa. But as I said, going out to the next week or so, the models aren't really showing anything really significant. But the Euro Ensemble tracks some of the members are showing that something might try to form off africa so let us go to that right now and here we have them we're seeing all these l's off the coast of africa so uh some of these members are showing something a little bit interesting but they're not showing anything uh very significant in terms of the maximum winds so let's wait and see what's going to be happening but this is by uh sunday the 21st of August and then going to GEFS right now which is the GFS ensemble tracks we're seeing that uh, this actually goes out a bit further to Monday the 22nd of August and we see some L's out in the main development region but we're not seeing anything of great significance out there so let's wait and see what's going to be happening within the next week or two but it is likely that we will be seeing increased shower and thunderstorm activity as we approach the peak of the hurricane season which is in turn likely going to be leading to a more favorable environment for us to have tropical cyclones developing but we need that reduction in that dryer and we also need that favorable wind shear in order for us to really see some uh significant development and so guys so far this hurricane season we've just had alex bonnie and colin so as i said earlier we are waiting on danielle and let's see if it is going to be forming before this month ends and i think that it has a pretty good chance to but we need those favorable conditions to really be in place for us to have any significant development taking place out in the main development region and one of the factors that is going to be contributing to that as we head to the peak is the end so of course course the El Nino Southern Oscillation and uh, the phase of it that is favorable for tropical development in the Atlantic is the La Nina phase, which is when conditions, uh, ocean temperatures are cooler over in the Pacific, which results in less shower activity over there. And that in turn leads to less interference over in the Atlantic basin. So uh, that is something that is actually there right now we are in a la nina so it is going to be aiding in tropical cyclone development as we approach the peak but of course aside from 97l we aren't seeing anything that is really out there right now to be watched and so guys that is really it for this update video so of course i'm going to be giving you guys the necessary updates as time goes by and if you found this video to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question i'll try to respond as best and as soon as i can and of course remember to always be weatherwise.